So let every knee come bow before the King of Kings. Let every tongue confess that He is the Lord. Lift up your shout. Let us join with all of heaven, singing holy. And let Thank you, Lord. We thank you for your victory. We thank you that you didn't stay in the tomb, that you've conquered death in the grave. We thank you, God. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. I pray we continue to celebrate the new life we have because of your victory, God. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Welcome back to Rooted. We really thank everybody for tuning in to us once again and allowing us into your phone, your home, through your tablet, through your iPad, through your uh, Galaxy, or whether you're using a desktop or a laptop, or you're using your television. Whichever way you're using, we just thank you for allowing us to come virtually into your personal space. We've been doing so many weeks about relationships. And I'm sticking to this theme for a few more uh, series to go. However, before we even get into our next topic, which is, are we friends? Before we get into that, I want to remind you that if you want to contribute and help with this ministry, you can. There are several ways. One is to just click in the link description below to our pay PayPal, which you can also do by logging on to ftcctoday.com. That's ftcctoday, T-O-D-A-Y. Dot com. If you log on to ftcctoday.com, you will find a button that says click to donate and you can donate right there. We can also use Cash App. For those of you that have used Cash App, our moniker is GIVE to FTCC. Dollar sign GIVE to FTCC. Once again, that's dollar sign give the number two FTCC. Also, those of you that would like to use Text to give, easy tithe, which is really easy. It's an ACH way to debit from your account. You can text this number, 914-292-7770. That's 914-292-7770. We've added two more ways 
now that you can also give thanks to your comments and your request. One is through Google Pay. Google Pay, you can use our email address, which is ftccfinance at gmail.com, ftccfinance at gmail.com. That is our Google Pay. And you can also use Zelle as well through our same email for our Zelle, ftccfinance at gmail.com or the phone number 845-709-9369 and you can Zelle with that number or that email. So these are the different ways you can help through Contribute. PayPal, Cash App, Easy Time, which is text to give. You can also use Zelle and you can also use Google Pay. Thank you again for your support of this ministry. Thank you again for your enthusiastic help. Thank you again for your comments. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Share to a friend, share to someone else right now. Take some time and reach out to somebody and share. Because what we're going to talk about today, I guarantee, is an issue that will help somebody. Let's pray once again. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father God, as we're about to go into the Word. And we ask that your grace and mercy would accompany us and allow this Word to plant a seed that will grow and be harvested for happiness, joy, and peace in the lives of anyone listening right now. Amen. I want to talk about was, are we friends? Are we friends? Why am I asking that? Well, because in relationships, we assume that the person that we're in a relationship with probably is our friend, but that's not always the case. And we'll take a look real quick into why that's not always the case. In the book of Proverbs, there's a verse, a part of a verse I really like. Proverbs 12, verse 26a. It says, the righteous choose their friends carefully. The righteous choose their friends carefully. You know, we like that phrase as, I fell in love. Falling is not a phrase that involves choice. We're falling in love that don't sound like somebody choosing. I've never heard somebody that chose to fall. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to choose to fall right now. No. Falling is less about choosing and more about instinct and more about, oh my God, discovery. But friendship is a choosing. Friendship is a quality that requires thought. Friendship is a quality that requires development. And relationships that are based on falling in love without friendships don't last. The great... Uh, philosopher Frederick Nietzsche once said, it is not a lack of love, but a lack of friendship that makes an unhappy marriage. It's not a lack of love, but a lack of friendship that makes an unhappy marriage. So true what Nietzsche has to say, and I can back it up and say I've seen many examples. Many, some of you have probably seen the same examples as well. So what do we mean by it's not a lack of love, but a lack of friendship? What we find happening in relationships is that when people are together, they assume that even though they're friends and they are together in a relationship, that the friendship is going to just continue on or grow or develop. But actually, the quite opposite is true. Sometimes and oftentimes in relationships, there are at least three other relationships that we are in that get over-prioritized compared to our friendship. Once again, there are at least three other relationships that get over-prioritized compared to our relationship. What are these three other relationships that get over-prioritized? I'm going to go into them right now. First, the romantic relationship. Relationship as partners, as spouses. You know, usually... In Western culture, that is the number one relationship that we emphasize. It is what's in all the movies. It's what's in all the books and novels that get sold. It is the romance of the relationship. It is important to distinguish between romance on one end and friendship on the other end. Matter of fact, we make fun of people who are in the quote-unquote friend zone. And the friend zone is clearly not the romance zone. So if you have a friend and you're in the friend zone, you obviously understand that there's a distinction between your relationship in terms of friendship and your relationship in terms of romance. Oftentimes people are joking or you see shows about how do I get 
out of the friend zone. If you go to YouTube and, or you Google that, you'll find so many millions of hits and so many videos talking about, I want to get out of the friend zone into the romance zone. If we can have shows about this, Google episodes about this and articles, it is an understanding that in society, we understand that there is a difference between friendship and romance. And what happens is when we are in a relationship, we need to understand that while those two coexist, they are not different. And what are we doing to cultivate one without the neglect of the other? So one of the relationships, again, is friendship gets not prioritized compared to romance. Secondly, parenting. When we become parents, we tend to prioritize the parenting relationship over other relationships especially friendship. I'm going to prove to you real quickly how come parenting is not the friendship relationship or parenting is not the romance relationship as well. You'll find that people will get divorced and they are not friends or romantically involved, but they can parent children. There are so many cases of that where people work out a parenting relationship. They understand that we are no longer friends. We are no longer romantically engaged, but what we are is parents, and it continues on because we have a duty, a moral responsibility, dare I say obligation, to parent these children who didn't choose to come into the world. Now, if the parenting relationship can continue in, in spite of no romance and no friendship between parents, then why should you let that relationship prioritize over the romance and friendship? Just think about that. Why should that relationship be prioritized over the other ones? It shouldn't. It can subsist on its own. A lot of times we put all our effort and all our energy into co-parenting, and guess what? We're doing the mistake that Nietzsche says we do. We allow the marriage to fail. Why? Because there's a lack of friendship. Too much emphasis on parenting or too much emphasis on romance or too much emphasis on both without enough on friendship. There is a third relationship that also, get, uh, get also gets prioritized. It is the relationship in terms of business. Recently, I was listening to Will Smith and Jada Pinkett have an interview. And what they were talking about was, there was a time in their marriage where the romance wasn't there, the friendship wasn't there, the only thing that was holding them together was the business partnership and the parenting. And it's really real. They were really good business partners. They really understood investments. They really understood bill paying. They understood expenses. They understood risk taking. They understood building their empire together. And at one point, building an empire together became more important than even their own relationship. It became more satisfying than even their own relationship. And then they had to sit back and take a while and say, what are we? Are we married or are we business partners? And that's the question I want to ask you. Are you just business partners or are you really married? What's missing? The missing element, and one of the things Jada Pickett said was she got to know who her husband was again during the pandemic. Why? Because they reconnected as friends. Question I have to ask you. Are you prioritizing romance, parenting, and business partnership over friendship? I'm going to give you seven keys to rekindling not your romance, but your friendship. Seven keys to explore, and then we'll be done with you. Seven keys. Number one key to rekindling your friendship is understand the importance of time and touch in friendship. There is a distinction between friendship touch and romantic touch, although the line could be blurred and one could go into the other. But friendship touches a hug. Friendship touches a handhold. Friendship touches an arm on the shoulder or an arm on the back. Friendship touch may be a massage. It may also lead to romance. But there's a touch that you can get from a friend that shows, hey, I'm there for you. And then there's friendship time, which is not romance time, which is not co-parenting time, which is not figuring out what we're doing with our expenses time. It is just time to tell me how you feel, how you hurt, um, what's going on between us, what's going on with you, what's going on with me. Time to share like you do with friends. 
So the first key is to understand your friendship time and touch. The second key, you need to cultivate, explore, and support your common interests. Okay, do I show interest in your activities? Uh, you know, do we go out to the gym together? Uh, do we go out uh, on to the mall together? Do we go shopping together? Uh, do I go to your games? Do you come to the games I like to watch? Do we go on vacations together where it's not always about romance? Sometimes family time is friendship time too. But just make sure that our interests are supported. Like whatever I'm supporting in, you support me. Whatever you're going in, I'm supporting you. Common interest. Do we show interest in what each other does? If you're an artist, do I show interest in your art? If I'm a musician, do I show in your music? If you're an athlete, do I show interest in your athleticism and your athletic activities and vice versa? Third key friendship is common points of view. In other words, can we compromise? It's the point of view. It's so important. Okay? Point of view. In other words, friends learn to compromise for friends. Is there a compromise in our relationship, or must I always be right, or must you always be right? Those are things that destroy friendships. And then number four, we've got to look at respect and consideration. A lot of times you got to ask, do you love me, do you respect me? This is also the source of domestic violence and the domestic abuse. In domestic abuse, the abuser oftentimes confesses, swears, uh, vows. I love you. Yeah, but you don't respect me. You don't respect my opinion. You don't respect my personal space. You don't respect my body. You don't respect my autonomy, my independence. You don't respect my identity. Friendship respects all those things. Friendship respects our space, our boundaries, our autonomy. Friendship is different from love in that sense. Friendship brings value. It's different from romance and that's friends. Because friendship has actions that show I value. Okay? Romance will bring you flowers and stuff like that, you know. But friendship will say, you know what? Um, I know you're kind of tired. Let me go out and do grocery shopping this time. I just want to take this responsibility off your hand. So one is romantic. One is friendship. When we're there as friends, we support and value each other. Friendship says, you know what, let me get you a, a pillow so you can just lift your foot up right now and feel rest. That's friendship. It's not a romantic act. It's a friendship act. Number five, we need to learn to manage disagreements. This is not too much different than point of view. In other words, can we manage hurt and pain? You know what's interesting? Romance and love don't manage hurt and pain. They expound on it. When we hurt each other, it hurts more when we're in love. When we give pain, it hurts more when we're in love. It's not the love that brings healing. It's the friendship. Lovers can't manage hurt and pain. Friends can. And that's the important part of it. What am I saying is, Proverbs 27, verse 5 through 6 talks about this. It says, better open rebuke than hidden love. And also says, wounds from a friend can be trusted, but an enemy multiplies lies or kisses. An enemy multiplies kisses. Wow. Romantic people kiss a lot, I would hope. But it says an enemy. In other words, we may be romantic involved, but we're enemies to each other. Why? Because I'm afraid to hurt you. You're afraid to hurt me. Therefore, we're afraid to be honest. And we'll just kiss each other to death. Meanwhile, we've hidden our real true love. True love is built on friendship that can openly rebuke. You notice how your friends can tell you things that other people can't tell you, and you stay friends. You know how your friends can say things to you that other people can't say, and it doesn't mean we're over? That is what has to be in your relationship. I'm sorry. Has to be there. And those are tough things, but when you can do those things, when you can listen carefully and not get hurt, when you can respect the other person's opinion and not feel slighted, when you can do your best to make sure that we compromise, and I listen, and you listen, and we adjust, then we are friends. Can we manage our disagreements? 
can we agree not to agree at certain times and it doesn't make anything change? Managing disagreements is so difficult. Managing disagreements is so hard, but it needs to be done. That's the fifth thing. I've got two more for you. I told you seven. Fun. Friends have fun. This is not romance fun. Uh, this is not making money fun. This is just fun. What do we do for fun? What games do we play? The human body responds well health-wise to fun. We need to have fun in a relationship. And the question is, do we have a balance where there is fun? Is it always about romance? Is it always about the children? Is it always about the money? Or can it also be about having fun? Friends need to go out and do fun things as friends do together. And this is highly quoted and related to the next point and the final last point I'm going to share with you. It's balance. See, true friends balance their friendship. What's going to happen is there's no balance. You're going to become, start getting jealous of your spouse's or your partner's friends. Why? Because you realize that your spouse and your partner have friends that take their time, connect more than you two connect. That's a problem. Another problem is stealing your spouse's friends. Uh, I call it stealing, but if you don't have friends and you're making their friends more your friends, that doesn't make sense. Now it's great when you guys all have co-friends together, but what has to happen is there has to be a balance between their friends and a balance between your friendship. And that balance is so important. I'm going to conclude by saying this. Friendship is so important because it's actually not the highs and lows of the relationship that break down the relationship. It's the day to day. Are we friends? If we don't have friendship, then we don't have the foundation to survive the inevitable highs and lows. We often think it's the high or low that we're on that breaks the relationship, like a real low point, but it isn't. The low point broke us because there was no bond of friendship. I'm gonna pray that we know that we're friends and that these seven keys we practice and grow. I need to grow on them every day. You need to grow on them every day. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this subject. And we ask that we would learn to become friends, to learn from each other and build that foundation. And that we would not prioritize the other relations above it, but allow it to be the priority. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for tuning in to Rooted. You can help support this ministry by logging on to ftcctoday.com and clicking on the donate button. Please help us share and spread the gospel by subscribing to this channel and clicking on the share and like button. See you next time.